Okay, the point of this video is to introduce the basics of compound interest and why we would use a spreadsheet to work with the compound interest formula. I'm going to write the formula here so that we have it in front of us and then I'll go back and explain it and how we use it in a spreadsheet. So just to use some variables, FV equals PV times, open parentheses, 1 plus Y. And if you haven't seen this formula a ton of times, that may seem confusing, but I'm going to break it all down for you. Um, the, again, the point of compound interest is I start with a small amount of money today, and I'd like to know um, if I apply a certain amount of time and a yield or interest rate to that small amount of money, how big does the money get? So let's start with defining some terms. The first one I'd say is we're going to start with money today. Let me make these all capitals money today. The thing we're trying to figure out is how much money will that be in the future? I'll call that uh, future money. Uh, then we always have a yield um, in annual percentage terms. And then we always have a sort of time that intervenes. So another word for money today, which is a little bit technical, but we need to get a little technical, is present value. We call future money uh, future value, and there's a reason which I think will be clear in a moment why I'm using these words. Yield goes by a lot of different names. Sometimes it's the interest rate, sometimes it's IRR, sometimes it's uh, return, and again this is in percentage, annual percentage terms. And then time might be years, but it could be other things as well. I'm going to further um, define these terms and start to use the variables that go into this formula above in cell D1. Present value we shorten to PV. Future value, which is what we're solving for, we want to, we want to solve for what is the money in the future, we call that FV, or I call that FV. The variable for yield or interest rate or IRR, they're all the same thing, I call Y. And then finally, time is represented by the variable M. Let's put it all together and show why a spreadsheet is super useful for figuring this stuff out. Let's say you are, uh, you have $5,000, you're 25 years old, and that's how much money you have today, and you're investing in an IRA. I'm gonna write down, you're 25 years old. Great. Uh, what we're trying to figure out is how big does that $5,000 get? Uh, we're gonna say, uh, we wanna know when we get to retirement age. So, 65 years old, that's, Quick math, 40 years, so I'm going to put in 40 for number of years. Let's say I invest in the stock market and I'm looking for a 7% return. I'm going to enter that in yield. And then finally what we're solving for, what I'm going to program the spreadsheet to tell me is according to this formula. So FV is equal to, remember look at the, the B1 here, is equal to, I'm going to hit the equal sign, PV, that's 5,000, multiplied by open parentheses, one plus the yield, raised to the power of n. And my spreadsheet's gonna tell me, I'm gonna turn this into dollars, if $5,000 could become 74,872.29 if it grows at 7% for 40 years. In plain language, that might be super useful to know if you're 25 years old and scraping together a little bit of money for your IRA. This type of math applies to all sorts of things. Anything like population growth, the compounds. You could grow a forest this way, starting with pine cones. You could grow populations of kittens in your backyard. In this case, I'm most interested in money, so I want to talk about how does $5,000 grow. But you could similarly say, I just have $500. So I'm going to change my starting amount, grow it at 7% for 40 years, and become 7,000. You might say, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to be cautious. I want to grow if this at a, a sort of a safer, lower rate because I'm investing in bonds. $500 might become $1,104. What about if I went for 75, year, uh, 75 years old? So now I could put in 50 years. And that's the amount it gets to. What if I was able to invest for 50 years? Um, I, let's go with the original 5000 50 years at more of a historically um, high but not outrageous return from the stock market, that number comes out as 586,954. I think that is a really interesting lesson and it's the 
sort of first order of interesting things we can know about compound interest. I want to mention there's other reasons why you would, I believe you should use a, a spreadsheet rather than, or learn how to build a spreadsheet to tell you about compound interest rather than just go online and get your average compound interest calculator. One reason is that not all things compound annually, sometimes with a compound more frequently than, uh, than annually, and we want to learn how to do that. That's a later video. Uh, other things would be, what if you wanted to figure out, I might put 5,000 in now, and also for the next nine years following that. That's a little harder to do in one of these online calculators, but it's not hard if we know how to set it up in our spreadsheet, and that'll be, again be the, the point of a future video. Thanks for watching.